Welcome to the Licensed to Live show, where professionals, doctors, champions, VIPs, attorneys, and those in public office discover strategies that help you restart and gain what is lost when you find yourself accused. If another has doubted your integrity, questioned your credentials, or caused your actions to come under scrutiny, you are in the right place. On the other hand, if you have never felt the knot in the pit of your stomach when legal papers are served, the heartbreak of disappointing your family when the lock clicks shut on handcuffs, or had to appear before a board of review, then be aware, the longer you serve, the more likely you are to find yourself under the microscope of those who judge. Prepare yourself for this uncomfortable possibility. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jarrett Hatton. Welcome to episode 169 of License to Live. My name is Dr. Jarrett Patton, and I'm your host for our journey together today and every day you choose to listen to this show. If you or anyone you know has been dissed in their career, please invite them to join us along this journey. Just go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your podcast and subscribe to the License to Live show. While you're there, please rate this episode. Give me honest feedback so I make sure I provide you with the most up-to-date information about career challenges and life changes. And on today's episode, we are going to have more interviews from our speakers coming off the stage uh, at License to Live, the conference 2023. So for those of you that didn't make it, you can check out each and every speaker through their Q&A, hear a little bit about what they're talking about, a little bit of what they learned. And if you want to see the entire replay, go to license to live.com. It's on special this week and you can purchase the replay and, and uh, see everything that everyone had to say. So we will get into our first speaker right after we finish thanking our sponsor. Hey, this is Dr. Jarrett Patton. Do you need more positivity in your life? No matter what part of your life you want to transform, positive affirmations can help you achieve your goals. But sometimes making permanent changes can be difficult. Designed with you in mind, License to Live, daily affirmations to rebuild your life will inspire and equip you to become the best version of yourself. License to Live, daily affirmations to rebuild your life will set you on the path to changing your mindset, beliefs, speech, and ultimately your actions. You can change your life now by getting your copy at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your finer book retails, or LicensedToLive.com. That's LicensedToLive.com. Hey guys, this is Janae Noonan, and I'm here with Dr. Jarrett on License to Live. Hit the subscribe, follow the journey, let's go. So our first Q&A session happens with Dr. Yvette McQueen. Dr. Yvette McQueen is an emergency medicine physician and travel doctor. She actually travels all around the U.S. and other countries practicing medicine in the emergency room. However, she has also taken her love of travel and turned it into another business in which she's advising people on top travel and even taking people on tours in various parts around the world. So let's listen to what Dr. Yvette has to say about her life now, the things that she's doing and the way that she continues to help people out there. Dr. Yvette, thank you so, so much, because I, all I can say is that you know, you have made travel into something that you always like to do, um, but you've made it a focus of, of your occupation, both through your career as a physician doing locums work, but then you have branched it out into 
a couple of books, you're doing CME tours, and, and you're really teaching people how to travel. So I love your tips about, hey, if you go somewhere, well, see how people are living. What are they eating? What are they doing? You know, so, yeah, go have a picnic in Paris. Yeah, I, I don't hear anybody saying that. And, and that is something I'm certainly going to do because just seeing what the culture of a place is like uh, lasts a little bit more than maybe if I have a picture of myself in front of the Eiffel Tower as an example. So I, I love that 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 tip. Now, I'm sure you're like triple diamond platinum on on Delta or something like that. So so give us give us a couple of good travel tips uh, now, especially you know, when, with, with so many cancellations, so many flights that get, get canceled or changed, people getting bumped. How, how do you navigate that? Because, you know, there's a lot of busy people here who need to get somewhere. And a lot of times it may be for work. What, what kind of things should they do in this, this current travel environment? Yes. So, uh, one th- so my travel tips, one of the first, my first travel tip I'm going to tell you is going to be health related is hydration. Oh my goodness. So many people are dehydrated and we know with this heat wave going on, but the whole thing is stay hydrated before, during, and after your travel, take you a water bottle. They have collapsible ones. You can refill in the airport instead of buying the $5 bottle. Um, but you got to stay hydrated because one that's going to reduce your risk for jet lag is going to reduce your risk for blood clots. It's going to uh, keep those joints moisturized. And if you have to skip meals because you run in between flights, that's hydration is key. Second of all, once again, what I said before about being flexible, oh my goodness, you need to be flexible. So uh, they tell people if you, if you flying with children, try to get a direct flight. Um, if you're trying to avoid the weather pattern problems, you want to get the earliest flight in the morning. OK, because that the, because as they delay during the day is when you get that domino effect. Uh, there's no certain day to buy cheaper tickets. Now, these tickets have gotten ridiculous. It used to be the old system was Tuesday and Wednesday. It's not now that everybody's online. If you see a ch- cheap ticket, buy it then. A lot oh, of people, okay. yes, buy it right then because I've done that. I've waited like, oh, I'm going to Spain. I'm going to wait, wait, wait. That ticket went up six hundred dollars the next week. I was so mad. (laughs) So if a lot of people like to play the points game. Um, So if you with me traveling for the last 20 years, I have a business credit card. My business credit card collects my points. So with locums, they pay for the flight and the car, but I can use those points for my personal um, reason. So stick, I say loyalty matters. And the more loyal you are, the more perks you get. So people's like, oh, well, I get the cheapest tickets. Sometimes it's the customer service. And that's why I'm still with Delta and their flights are ridiculous and their prices are higher. But over the years, they have treated me right. Um, I'll call them up and say, hey, uh, my my father had a heart attack. I had to be there the next day. They gave me the 14 day price instead of the next day price. Oh, okay. Sometimes people don't use the phone. They need to think they do need to do everything online. Sometimes you can do a phone. So make sure you just pick, pick one credit card, one or two credit cards and you can follow. uh, Can I say somebody's name? Sure. Oh, the points guy. Follow the points guy. guy. Yeah. The points guy, follow him. They give you tips about the credit cards that are best for travel or for business to collect your points that you can use for your personal reasons. I would say that. Uh, And second and the third one, I would say, if you plan to travel, just research, research where you're going, uh, research um, the habits of that place. Just, Just don't go somewhere randomly, because if you're going somewhere where the women need to cover up, um, that they're treated differently, uh, or you go in somewhere, like I said, you know, like on Mondays, it's considered a banking day. So everything's closed somewhere. You, you won't get excited or, or angry because you can't get what's done. That is excellent, excellent, excellent tips. And, um, you know, Hey, the fact that, that you have done all of this and you're still able to travel and you still practice whenever you want to, um, is, is really a lifestyle to be admired. So my final question for you is, is, is when, where's your next trip? (laughs) You missed all the good trips this year. (laughs) 
already done Ghana, Spain, Greece. Okay. Oh my um, goodness. Yes, of course. The, the next trip is actually family trip. So I schedule my CME trips, other group trips, usually in the spring and the fall for people. And I leave the summertime for my family. You know, family's important, your community is important. So I have a um great nephew that's now nine since he was four years old. I take him, auntie takes him on a summer trip every year. So <laughs> the next trip is with him and I'm going to venture, uh, venture out and do a Disney cruise. Haven't done one. Her okay. Lots <laughs> of children. <laughs> I heard they have adult hours though. So, <laughs> so I'm taking him on a Disney cruise. You're gonna be doing your your Friday from five to midnight on the Disney cruise. There you go. <laughs> Joining the bowling league on there. Yeah. Dr. Yvette, thank you so much for being here today. You've given us great, great information. Where can people find out more about you? Okay, Yvette McQueen MD.com. Okay. And then if you do an Instagram, it's Dr. Travel911. Travel me and I give you health tips. You can see where I'm going. And you can always join any of my travel groups. Well, you heard it from Dr. Yvette. She is doing it. I mean, she's traveling, she's practicing, and she is training people through CME trips. I mean, this is just an amazing way to put your things together. So make sure you're checking out Dr. Yvette McQueen. Our next speaker uh, that was coming off the stage is Dr. John Jerica. Now, I've known him as what I call the non-clinical guy, because from the time I got on Facebook to see what other doctors were talking about, he was out there talking about non-clinical careers. And that caught my attention early on. And he, as a family medicine physician, uh, the creator of the new script app and has done a number of things, both within his own career, as far as executive leadership, being chief medical officer and lots of uh, leadership positions over his career. But now he advises other people who want to switch out of clinical medicine and switch into a another type of job where they can still use their skills. Dr. John Jerica says there is a job for everyone and he will tell us exactly why through this Q&A session. Well, that, that's why you're the non-clinical guy. I mean, that's you're, you're, that's you're right. the guy. Um, <laughs> Dr. Jerica, thank you so much for coming to the License to Live stage again. There's just so many, so many gems that you gave us during this presentation. Um, and first of all, let's talk about that best kept secret in healthcare. <laughs> what do you call the best kept secret in healthcare? Are you asking me? Yeah, I wait. Think I, the I best asked kept the secret is all the yeah. non-clinical jobs out there that we can uh, we can search for and and move into as our next stage. This is not going back. This is we all have careers in advance over time. Better, better. And for me, I mean, becoming a CMO in a hospital or insurance company or pharma or a principal investigator in pharma or whatever, a long list of things. That's the next step. You're better than what you're doing now. You want to keep going and expanding your horizons. And, and, and you talked about because of that, there's a job out there for everyone. And, and literally, you gave us a number of examples of people that thought there was no job for me. So one of your myths was to really debunk the myths that yes. there's not a job for me. There are thousands. I've tried to find if there's a statistic, but I swear in my opinion, there's probably, you know, there's how many, there's a million physicians in the country, more or less. I think at least 15% of them are no longer seeing patients and they're not retired. They're working. It might be more. I just know that with all the, the, the things that have come out from the government as they layered and layered and layered on different regulations, different processes we have to follow. You always need physicians to get in the middle of that and teach other physicians how to do it or uh, communicate with them how to do it, even like in the hospital level, right? When you were in the hospital, you had to have those physician advisors, those medical directors to communicate. And so I, I think it's exploded. And I wish I could find the statistic on it. How many, uh, I don't know if the AMA has that anywhere, but I'm going to try and get it one of these days. That, that you're right. That would be a powerful statistic because of all, you just in general, what's going on in healthcare. <laughs> wow. So finally, uh, you can rattle off a number of jobs that people can have so easily. And, and, and you gave me a clue today and you said anything with medical 
in the, mm-hmm. in the name. Could you just rattle off a few? Well, I'll start. I'll maybe try and do it by the the ones that from the how common they are, at least that I run into, you know, without doing a survey. I mean, especially people that are really it's usually going to be a medical director for utilization management. So in the hospital setting, they might call you a physician advisor. But when you work for a company that you're doing the, the benefits review or you know approving things, that's called a medical director. So that's very common. Medical science liaison, very, very common because, again, it's open to anybody. Now, when I said you could do it even without residency and and, uh, board certification, that's true. A lot of MSLs do have residency and board certification. So it's the widest in terms of your expertise and what you need to get that. So you got MSL, you got the medical director, a lot of medical director roles in the hospital setting. Every service line has a medical director for the most part. Usually their leadership management is only part-time, but when you get into medical director of quality, medical director of, of uh, CDI, clinical documentation, integrity, medical director for informatics. Now you're getting into real administrative management jobs. Um, and then uh, in pharma, you know, besides MSL somewhere in medical affairs, you know, they're, uh, well, the other big one are medical directors, of medical affairs, but that's a very generic term. Uh, I would say most people that are going from practice into wouldn't go directly into medical affairs that often, but they would go more into pharmacovigilance or safety uh, as a medical director in safety. And then, you know, chief of that. What are the other big ones? Uh, consulting is a big one, but it's very, you know, it's kind of hard to pigeonhole as to what would be the best way to approach that other than just start looking at consulting job listings and figure out what you need to do to prepare yourself for that. Awesome. That that's fantastic. Again, thank you for this great, great presentation that you gave us today. Once again, where can people find out more about you? And and please tell us what's up with the new script app again. Okay, so the best way to find me is to go to nonclinicalphysicians.com. That's just my website. You'll get a pop-up selling you something probably, but then you'll actually get links and pop-ups for free things, like a list of 70 non-clinical jobs, just a list with a resource with it. I have a 10, I have like a ebook kind of thing. It's got 10 non-clinical careers. It's free. There's a lot of free stuff on the website. So nonclinicalphysicians.com. And then if you want to learn a little bit about new script, our landing page for that is only like a page long. So it doesn't have a lot of detail, but it's at newscript.app, A-P-P. And newscript, there's nurses, dentists, podiatrists, doctors, oral surgeons. So there's a lot of clinicians in there doing different things. And it's like a Facebook lookalike. You go in there and there's these streams of uh, posts. Uh, Tom Davis posts almost every day. I post try, probably once or twice a week. I know you're in there a lot. Uh, Deborah Blaine, Larissa Crayer. We have a bunch of mentors that post in there. And and the thing is, it's really easy to use. You can take your phone and you can push a button and you can record a video. Uh, you can actually, even the people that are um, not mentors can do live streams in that app um, where you push a button. It lets the word out you're doing a live stream and then you just get going. We usually can promote those ahead of time if you know you're going to do it. And they can type in. They can't communicate verbally, but they can type in questions. So it's about the easiest way to interact. We don't do as much of that as we just do the videos when we feel like doing that, but, and it's there and um, there's questions thrown out and answers come just like on a Facebook group in terms of, okay, here's where I'll direct you this way. And then there's also the ability to then go offline off out of a new script and follow up with those mentors or Tom or me, uh, that kind of thing. So now you get the idea of what the best kept secret is in healthcare. <laughs> Not only John Jerica, but it actually is this abundance of non-clinical jobs out there. So make sure you check out John Jerica if you want to learn more about non-clinical jobs and certainly join the gang along with myself and, and other mentors in the New Script app. And we're going to get to our next speaker on deck right after we finish thanking our sponsors. The time is now to refresh your career. We help doctors, lawyers, executives, and VIPs refresh and restart. Dr. Jarrett's coaching helps you build confidence, gain more credibility, develop more leadership skills, and gain clarity in your career path. Want to climb the executive ladder or branch out on your own? We'll put your career in overdrive. Visit drjarrett.com and sign up for your free strategy session. 
at any time, you can make a strategy session with me. I am happy to meet with you, troubleshoot things that are going on in your career, helping you find that right job or making those next career steps, because that will make your life better. I mean, if you have to work, you might as well be doing something you love. So this next segment is one that I helped bring out. And I wanted people to learn from some of the celebrities that I've uh, met over the years and and advice that they have given me. Uh, But I think all of them make some common mistakes. And I walk you through the mistakes many people uh, have made in their mentality and their thinking about their life and their career. So I'll walk you through this collection of stories and tell you how you can have a great life. So there's some common mistakes that we get uh, a lot of times. People think that they're saying things and and I'm going to base these off of things that people have told me. And so it's going to be a basic short story of a couple of uh, interesting people that have told me some things that I think are common mistakes. And the first one comes with good old Martha Stewart. Now, you know, Martha Stewart has been up, down. She had some of the peaks and valleys like Dr. Yvette was talking about in her presentation. And uh, she's very open about about all of those. And one of her mantras is never give in. And there are some times and then even she admitted there are some times that well, you must give in um, because there are some things that are going to be out of your control. Um, and if you are in a position in which you are being you know, abused or taken advantage of because of all your expertise or you even feel devalued, this is the time when you just may want to give in and give yourself a change into something new. Uh, and that is is something that is uh, going to change the way you think about things, because sometimes you just get dug into that situation so hard that you're just trudging along and they're just, you know, breaking your back every single day. This is, this is, this is it. This is exactly it. Sometimes you should give in now much on this similar theme, world champion Evander Holyfield says never quit. Now he had a tough upbringing and he literally had to fight through all his nine siblings to, you know, make his way into heavyweight champion of the world and be a dominant figure in boxing. And with that being said, he said he never could quit. Well, sometimes, sometimes in life, it's okay to quit because we have that kind of advice drilled into our head and it's, you know, carried on from generations. All right, well, just, you know, bite the bullet and keep going. Sometimes it's okay to quit. And you may be at that situation where you need to quit and do something different now. And that's going to be fine. Don't beat yourself up. If (laughs) no pun intended, but don't beat yourself up. If it's time for you to quit. Uh, Here we go. No, this is, this is one of my favorites, you know, multi-award winning author, 30 something books, Mr. Berger here. He says that eh, <laughs> with work-life balance, he said, he said, nobody lives balanced lives. Only idiots do. That's a strong statement. That's a strong statement. You should strive for that balance. Now, hopefully you're going to have more life in that balance. And more life in that balance will help keep you going, keep you moving forward. But um, at least if work and life is balanced, that's a good starting point, because all too often we talked about it earlier. The work life consumes your overall life. So you have very little of your good life that you have to take advantage of. So you (laughs) I have to disagree. He's written lots of good books that that are that are um, very informative. But again, a mistake thinking that work life balance is not achievable. That doesn't float the boat here. So here are my keys to a great life. First thing you need to do is look at your goals and look at your goals, not only your short term goals, but look at your long term goals. Where do you want to see yourself in life? 
We talked about it with Dr. Harris today about seeing and manifesting this to happen. So, you know, you have to start saying it and you have to start thinking it and then you have to walk in faith to believe it. And, and so that is one of those things you have to look at your goals and in the short term, maybe I just need to get out of this job situation, get another job, but then don't wind up in the same situation that you've been in this whole time. Look at what that longer term goal looks like. Look at what that long term success looks like and then move it forward. So this picture reminds me of a day I was walking after speaking at a conference, kind of tired, looking for something to eat in New York City. And, you know, you can walk up half a flight to a restaurant or you can walk down underneath and you never know what you're going to get. Could be fine dining, could just be a hole in the wall. So I said, oh, I'm going to walk down. There's an easy way to get down. And uh, I come into this place. It looks, you know, kind of barish, kind of dungeonish. Wasn't sure if I was going to stick around too long because I didn't see a lot of food being served. And so uh, a woman walked up to me and said, hey, would you like some ice cream? And I said, well, you know what? Ice cream would make my day better. I'll go with some ice cream. And sure enough, I go over. She escorts me to this gentleman. His name was Jerry. And he served me some salted caramel core ice cream. And I said, oh, this is great. I said, hey, Jerry, I'm Dr. Jarrett. Thanks for serving me some ice cream. He said, hey, I wanted to go to medical school when I was in college. And I said, uh oh, where is this going? He said, well, uh, I said, well, what happened? What, 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 did, what did you do? And he said, yeah, I studied. I studied. I had great grades and I sent 20 applications off to medical school. Oh, wow. OK, now I'm thinking so. OK, and now you serve ice cream for fun. So did you get into any schools? Did you go somewhere? And 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 uh, he said, no, I got 20 rejection letters from every one of those schools. So I got in nowhere. And I said, gee, so uh, what did you do after that, Jerry? And he said, well, I hooked up with my buddy who is much less studious in school. His name is Ben. And I took a five dollar correspondence course at Penn State University and learned how to make ice cream. And that was the rest of his story. <laughs> yeah, that was Cherry Greenfield. And and so this is why it's important to look at your goals, even if you have some things that you would consider a failure or not a success right away. Hey, just keep on moving. There's going to be another route for you. Integrate, integrate, integrate work into life and life into work. This is one of the best ways you get balanced. And I use this picture of iced tea and cocoa as a perfect example of this, because if you know anything about them, uh, especially with Ice T in his acting career, you know, he plays a TV cop and, you know, he emerged on the scene as a gangster rap artist uh, early on. And so he went from being a gang member to playing a cop on TV, which is, which is crazy, but he used his experiences to make his character even more believable. And so he effectively integrates life into work. Coco on the same way, she makes her money through, you know, all types of endorsements and things. And Hey, if you check out her Instagram feed, she's probably just living life with her daughter. Uh, and they're hanging out, having fun in the meantime. So I urge all of you guys to find a way to integrate work into life and life into work. And when you do that, you're not going to have any problems at all. It's going to be amazing and you're going to achieve balance and you're going to live more life. So don't force yourself to stay in the same place. And then everything in your life should be more fun. It has to be fun because if it's not fun, it's not worth doing. If you're dreading going to work, if it's weighing down and you're not having any fun, you need to find another job. And I have this picture here because, hey, I was do I was doing my job that day, doing an interview, and I was sure having a lot of fun, as you can see. So was the, the TV host. She was having a great time, too. So it's about having lots of fun. And then, and boy, if I tell you uh, Grammy Award winning uh, Wynton Marsalis and him having fun, if you ever go uh, and you like jazz and like to go check out a jazz concert, you go watch him, even with this Lincoln uh, Center Orchestra or not. 
if it's just a quartet or five member band, they are having fun the whole time. They are giggling and laughing and have all this nonverbal communication. Again, another tremendous example of both integrating life into work, work into life, and certainly having a lot of fun. So you've got to have fun. I'll tell you what, what, what uh, he told me yesterday, uh, tomorrow rather, uh, so that uh, we can, we can talk about having more fun uh, as he knows this. And then it's about life's expectations. And, and I was hoping we get to talk about Mike Logan. You saw him in my uh, first sizzle reel earlier today, welcoming us to license to live this, this man, he's a Super Bowl champion. He played in the NFL for the Steelers. You guys know that, that I'm a Steelers fan by now. And uh, we connected and we had this interview on license to live where he talked about his expectations and the part of this story, and, and you really need to hear it in its entirety, going going down, down the way. He, at six years old, playing football in, in the park near his neighborhood in Pittsburgh, he proclaimed that he was going to play football for his career. He was going to go to the NFL and win a Super Bowl championship. And Sometimes you have these childhood dreams. You heard mine. Mine was a truck driver. I even went to get my CDL at one point, but it still never, never worked out for me. Another story, maybe I'll tell you tomorrow. But with Mike Logan, he did never gave up on that dream. Had a tremendous college uh, uh, seasons when he was at West Virginia, went on to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers for the majority of his career in his hometown and won a Super Bowl. And uh, when you think about having expectations and great expectations for your life, the pathway to doing that is so that small. I mean, lots of kids want to go to the NFL, but this guy had those great expectations and that manifestation that he did it. So those are my keys to a great life. Well, this show is over, <laughs> but make sure that you have a great life. L-I-F-E. Remember, Firestarters, if you or anyone you know has been dissed, disengaged, dissatisfied, disgruntled, disenfranchised, or any other diss, please invite them to join us along this journey. Simply go to Spotify or your favorite podcast player and subscribe to License to Live. And let me know what's going on in your life, just like I'll let you know what's going on in my life. And in between episodes, I hang out a lot on LinkedIn. So make sure you connect with me there. And if you want to see the whole conference in review, check it out while it's on special right now. Go to license to You can purchase the replay now and you're going to have access to see every single one of these speakers and how each one of them has a message for you that will help you change your life for the better. See you next time. No matter how disheartening the moment of accusation sounds, how deep the pain of immobilization stabs, or how bleak your future looks, no one can take away your license to live. Keep Dr. Jarrett's expertise handy and unlock your future. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or another podcast player and subscribe right now to Licensed to Live. See you next time.